Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is um, a, a little quick review about GCF. Can somebody share with the class what is special about the GCF of a pair of numbers? And uh, let's just go, did we start on this side last time or that side? Let's just try to go up and down. Start on, start on that side? Okay, we're going to start over here. Um, yes, Villatoro, could you tell me what's special about GCF of a pair of numbers? Yes, it's not just any factor, though, right? It's the greatest factor. Right. It's a, a factor. It's the largest factor. Two numbers have in common. Okay, well now let's go ahead and review how do we find the GCF. Well, let's take a look at number two. Do you guys remember we did our factor trees? Did you guys use factor trees to do this? So hopefully you did. If you did it and you had another, another strategy and it worked out, here's the time that you can use to check that strategy. Okay, so 6 and 10. Let's do 6. First factor that can go, first prime number that goes into 6, 2 and 3. And guess what? We're done, right? Yeah. Because 3 is also prime. And let's go ahead and take care of 10. Go ahead. 2 and 5, are we done? Right, because both of the bottom branches are both, all of my bottom branches are prime numbers. So now, what do they have in common? They just got two in common, right? And so the GCF of 6 and 10 equals 2. OK, so now let's go ahead and do the next one, 12 and, 14, uh, 12 and 24. Uh, 12, let's go ahead and take care of 12. First prime number that goes into 12? Two. two. And two times what gives you 12? Six. six. And guess what? Do you see that I already have six over here? I already have this factor tree over here, right? And it's part of six. Oops. Boom, done. Right? Does that make sense what I just did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 24. How about 24? And I'll do that in a different color. Let me do that in blue. 24. Two and what? Two and 12, right? Well, look, I got 12 over here, right? So I'm just going to copy. OK, so what do they have in common? Well, let's circle it in green. I have, a, I have these two in common. OK, I have these two in common. These two, in, uh, I'm out of twos, right? So I can't use the other two. But I have a three in common. OK, and then just look at one set of your numbers. Two times two times three is what? Nope, not 12. Two times, yeah, you know, you're right. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12, sorry. And then GCF of 12 and 24 equals 12. OK? Most of you can do it in your head, but I'm giving you like a strategy that's going to get you there every time, right? Because not everybody is on that level yet, but eventually you'll, you'll be there, OK? All right, so four and 50, 45 and 50. Let's do 45. I'll do this one in black. How about that? 45. OK, does two go into 45? No. Does three? How many times? 15. OK, let's break that down. Does two go into 15? Nope. So three is the smallest prime that'll go in, and it goes in there five times. And five is also prime, so we're done with the factor tree for this. 
And so let's go ahead and do 50. And I'll do that down here. Uh, does 2 go into 50? How many times? 25. Keep going. Does 2 go into 25? Nope. Nope. It's not even. Shh. What about 3? Does 3 go into 25? No. Does 4? Does 5? Do you see how we worked our way up to the smallest prime? 5. And then how many times 5 go into 25? 5 times. And guess what? All my bottom branches are prime, so we're good. Now let's circle what they have in common. So do I have a 3 in common? Nope. Do I have a 2 in common? Uh, I don't see a 2 up here for 45. Uh, but do I have a 5 in common? Yes. Yep. I have another 5 over here. Is there another 5 in common? No. So guess what? What's the GCF going to be? So the GCF, and this time I'm just going to put parentheses, GCF equals 5. That's the largest factor. Yes? Yeah, so we're just going to continue down the branch this way. Oh, it's okay. I thought you said like two multiplied by the two and then by the. Well, here I was trying to. Here I was trying to uh, identify which com which factors they had in common mm -hmm. for twelve and twenty-four. Okay, so you're right. The branch is just going to continue down here. These are all going to be all my prime numbers. So you're just going to continue that branch until that becomes a prime. Okay, so let's take a look and. and uh, at 15. 17. Is 17 going to have a factor tree? Why not? Because it's a prime number. Very good. What about 23? Also a prime number. So if, if the numbers are both prime, what do we say about that? The GCF, shh, 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 shh. remember prime numbers have always what, what are the factors? One, and one in itself, right? So if 17 has 1 and 17 and 23 has 1 and 23, what do they have in common, ladies and gentlemen? They got 1. So the GCF of 17 and 23 equals 1. They're prime numbers, so they didn't have anything in common besides 1. OK, any questions? All right, let's go ahead and go through this. Uh, what you'll learn, to write equivalent fractions and to simplify fractions. Our new vocabulary is equivalent fractions, simplest form. Why learn this? Okay, I know you guys like to think about food, and when I talked to you guys earlier about uh, quartiles, I was talking about chocolate bars. Well, the book brought chocolate bars back into the picture for math again. So if you look at this, why I learned this, suppose you have three identical chocolate bars. You break one bar into four pieces and give three of them away. That's what we have over here. Okay? You break the second bar into six pieces, oh, eight pieces, and you give six away. That's what we have over here. And then you break the third bar into 12 pieces, and you give away nine. Have you guys ever had the chocolate bars where you break the little <laughs> rectangles off? I like Hershey's, but the kind that frustrates me is the ones that have caramel inside. Yes. And you, don't, you have to be careful, because if you don't break them right, then the caramel gets all over the place. I hate anyway. Um, so if you notice, do you see these, these, three, these three bars? I made them so that they are the same size. And if you look the shaded area, it's the same amount of chocolate that you're giving away every time. Do you guys notice that? Do you see that? Now, what I want you to also notice, they have a name for that. They're called equivalent fractions. So fractions that name the same amount are equivalent fractions. You can write equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same non-zero number. And so the example I have here, if you notice, I took the numerator, I multiplied by 2, and I got 6. 
I took the denominator, I multiplied by 2, and I got 8. You guys see that? I can also go backwards with that. I can go backwards by dividing by 2. Do you guys understand that? I can go backwards with that if I divide by 2. OK? Any questions? All right. Here's an example. Use a table of multiples to write three fractions equivalent to 7 eighths. Well, if you look, and you guys are going to like having the multiplication chart for this because it's going to be very helpful, right? If you look, this is just, you're just skip counting by 7, right? 7 times 2, so the next multiple is 14, right? The next multiple is going to be 21. Sorry. Yeah, right here is the tissues. And the next multiple is 28. But notice, I have to keep in line, OK, if 7 times 2 is 14, I've got to keep track of what seven, 8 times 2 is. Okay, because when I'm taking a, this fraction into account, I can't just multiply any fraction, any any number to the numerator and a different number to the denominator. It's got to be the same. Okay, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. So here's the solution, and that comes right from the chart: four sixteenths, twenty-one twenty-fourths. Oh, is that not up here? Yep, there it is. And then twenty-eight thirty-seconds. OK, if you guys can quickly write down, hopefully you guys already did this, write down some fractions that are equivalent to fourth this. Come up with some creative ones. I would like some interesting ones. Can somebody give me an interesting fraction that's equivalent to four fifths? And James, or jo Joseph. Yes. 40 over 50. Good. And what did you multiply the numerator and the denominator by? Right. So Joseph gave me 40 fiftieths. That's, that's an interesting one. And the factor that he used to get that was 10. Uche, what do you got? Uh, eight tenths. Eight tenths? Nice. And what factor do you use to get that? Two. Two. Very good. So we got eight tenths. And then Logan, what did you get? 48. 60ths, that's a good one. What did you multiply by? 12. 12. Are we good? So some are less obvious than others. Fatima. Fatima, sorry. Nice, 80 over 100. And what did you multiply by? Good. So those are some good examples. Here's the examples. Here's some more examples. Um, Is it possible that everybody's going to have a different set of fractions equivalent? Right. Yes. How many equivalent fractions are there to four fifths? A lot. A lot. A lot. To, be exa to, to be honest with you, there's, there's infinitely many equivalent fractions. Because there's infinitely many numbers you can, whole numbers you can multiply the fractions numerator and denominator by, right? OK, so there's, there's, if you come up with some, there's plenty more to be, be had. Any questions about this? Are we good? OK. Simplest form. A fraction is written in simplest form when the numerator and the denominator have no common factors other than 1. For example, 1 third and, th and 3 ninths are equivalent, but only 1 third is written in simplest form. Do you guys understand? And so the numerator and the denominator, the GCF is going to be 1. Do you guys understand? Does that mean the numerator and the denominator have to be prime for it to be in simplest form? No. no. Are we good? OK. Write three fractions equivalent to 24 thirtieths. And I'd like some creative ones. You guys can come up with some uh, good ones for me. Okay, I'm going to go up the row. 
Gloria Bell, do you have a fraction that's equivalent to 24 thirtieths? 48 sixtieths, right? That's equivalent. Very good. How about you, Rudy? What do you got? Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Terrell, you got a fraction equivalent? I'm going to go down this row. Anybody? Oren, you got a fraction that's equivalent to 24 thirtieths? Seventy-two ninetieths. Nice. Okay. Miles. Ninety-six. One twentieths. Okay. What was the factor you used for that? Four. Four. Okay. So you're you're making um, fractions that are equivalent, and these fractions are are these simplest form? No. no. So let's look at how we would write a fraction um, in simplest form. We're going to get to that. So here are some right here. And you guys went the other direction. Remember, you can multiply or divide. OK, so you guys came with these fractions. But the book talks about another method where you could reduce it, you could simplify, you could make the fraction where the numerator and the denominator are smaller numbers, right? Yeah. OK. So if we were to write out all the factors, and 24 is not prime, right? And, and how do we know a number is not prime? It has more than two factors, right? So we see 24 and 30, they both are not prime. And so when we write out all their primes, we come up with all the numbers that will the whole numbers that we'll divide that, are, that the number is divisible by. We see that 2 and 3 and 6 are in common. So if we divide the numerator and the denominator, 24 divided by 2, 12. 30 divided by 2 is 15. We have 12 15ths. That's another equivalent fraction. So here we see 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 30 divided by 3 is 10. OK. And then the other example. 24 thirtieths can simplify to 4 fifths. The common factor that we use to divide the numerator and the denominator by was 6. Any questions? So students usually have no problem going this direction. This is, this is when they start to struggle a little bit. But it's not that tough, do you think? OK. Uh, Caleb. Right, to make them larger numbers, right. But if you want to simplify it to, to try to get it to simplest form, you would, you're going to try to divide to see what numbers you can divide it by. And so that's kind of the direction we're, we're heading to. How do we get it in simplest form? Because where we're going to go with this is we would use the, the number we would divide by is the GCF. Okay, so we're, we're heading that way. Question? Are we, are we going to use decimals? Yes, we ev eventually we are, yes, certainly. And we already have used decimals a little bit. But fractions typically, you're not usually going to see a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are decimals. But it is possible. And when we get to that, we'll talk about that some more. OK, so those are the equivalent fractions. Let's take a look. Now, with that example in mind, I'm going to give you those factors. Can you come up with the equivalent fractions now that I've identi identified for you the factors of 18 and 30, can you come up with um, a fraction that we could simplify this to? Wait, mm -hmm. simplify. Oh, but not simplest form, but simplify. <laughs> Young man, what's your name again? Excuse me? Abu, could you give me give me one fraction? Um, uh, 3, three fifths. Three fifths. Very good. And what factor did you use to get three fifths? What factor oh. did you use to get three, three six. fifths? Six. And what did you do with six? Um, I divided. Divided. Yeah. Okay. Can somebody give me another factor uh, fraction that's equivalent to eighteen thirtieths? Yes. 9 15ths. 
And how'd you come up with that? Divided by two, and that's a fact that they have in common. And there's one more I'm looking for. And so going up and down the row, so I'm on this row now. Uh, go ahead. So you divide, I would need six fifteenths. Six and how'd you get that? No, hold on. No, six tenths. Six tenths. That's another one. Because you divided the numerator and the denominator by three. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 3 divided by 3 is 10. And there we have it. So back to what Caleb said, there are infinitely many fractions, but in many cases we want to get to simplifying a fraction and sometimes even simplest form. Okay? So these numbers, or these fractions we have here, 6 tenths, 3 fifths, 9 fifteenths, we've simplified the fraction. We've made the numerator and the denominator smaller numbers. Okay, but we need to talk more about what's simplest form. So we're going to get to that. Uh, simplify by dividing. Okay, so this is a strategy a lot of students use, but it doesn't always, I, I see a lot of students that start to simplify the fraction, but they don't get it to simplest form. So what's off the bat would be a, a factor that we know would divide into the numerator and denominator? Two, right? A lot of students would do that. So if you use two, 12, the numerator divided by two gives me six. 24 divided by two gives me 12. So we have six twelve. But is six twelfths, is that simplified all the way? No. no. So I can keep dividing. What would be another? factor that they have in common that I could divide by to simplify this further. Go ahead. Saki. Go ahead. Thomas, sorry. Thomas. What? Timothy. Timothy. What? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Timothy, go ahead. What would we do? To Two fourths or one half? Hold on, hold on. Okay, so if I divide by 3, right, I can get that. That would take me to, what's 12 divided by 3? That gives me, let me rewrite that. This is pretty sloppy. So using what Timothy said, he said divide by 3. And then what did he get back? Four, six, right? Eight. Four eighths. Okay, is that simplified all the way? No. No, but we can keep working on it, right? Isn't there a factor between four and eight that we can divide by? What is the factor? I can divide the numerator and denominator by four, so if I take four eighths, divide the numerator by four, divide the denominator by four, that's going to give me one half. Now, the book gives you an example over here. From 6 twelfths, they divide. Um, oops. That's a mistake. So let me fix that. No, I just had to change this fraction. That was a typo on my part. OK, are we good? So here, 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Then we have it simplified all the way down. So simplest form is 1 half. All right, go ahead and simplify that. Some of you can probably do this in one step. If you're doing it in one step, it's because you're using the GCF to divide it by. Okay, you're dividing the numerator and the denominator by the GCF. If you're not using the GCF, it's because you're not using the numerator, the G, you're not dividing the numerator and the denominator by the GCF, so it's not simplified all the way. So what do you got? All the way in the back. Hola. Two thirds. Two thirds. Did you guys get two thirds? Yeah. Okay. Well, that that works. Because you divided by what? Three, three right? 
two thirds? Hold on, what'd you divide by? Four. You divide by four. And four would be the GCF of eight and 12, but if you didn't do it that way, you could have kind of whittled it down. Eight divided by two here gives me four. 12 divided by two gives me six. That's not simplest form, so I can keep dividing. But if you look, by the time I get to two thirds, what did I, what did I divide by twice? I divided by two twice, right? And what's two times two? Four. So if you divided by four in the first place, you would have gotten to two thirds in the first place. Which goes back into the last part of the lesson. OK, using the GCF to simplify a fraction. All right, so in the United States, there are 48 types of road signs. Of these, 16 are instructional, such as speed limit or stop signs. What fraction of road signs are instructional? Write your answer. Well, first of all, what's the GCF of 48 and 16? Can you guys figure that out really quickly? What is the GCF? Eight, do you guys agree? Eight's the GCF? 16's the GCF. Okay, I'm not gonna go, go into how to find the GCF. I had that in my lesson from the other day. But if you divided by eight, you would have been okay. You just wouldn't have gotten to the simplest fraction right off the bat. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So I have 16, 48. You said divide by eight. And what did we get back? Two, six. And we can simplify 2, 6 by what? Two. Dividing by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, 2 divided by 2 is what? 1. one. And 6 divided by 2 is? Three. 3. But I divided by 8 and I divided by 2. What's 8 times 2? 16, which was the GCF. Do you understand? But you don't have to keep dividing if you know how to find the GCF and use the strategy I showed you about the GCF. OK? All right, so the solution. And a lot of you guys need to make sure you're labeling your answers when you're taking these assessments. Some of you guys are just putting the number down. Eventually, I'm going to have to take points away from you. So I'm just trying to give you a heads up. Because if you're taking a park or an SAT and they have a BCR part, they're going to dock you. So I don't want you to think that, oh, well, they should know what I'm talking about because the question's right there. No, they're going to want you to label your answer, OK? So moving right along. This one's about a class that ordered calculators. Of these 45 calculators, 18 were solar powered. What fraction of the calculators were solar powered? Well, we need to figure out what is the GCF. Can somebody tell me what, the, what do you think the GCF is? What's the GCF of 45 and 18? I hear nine. Do you guys agree? Yes. OK. So if we use nine and divide the numerator and denominator by nine, we're going to end up with 18 divided by nine, which is two, 45 divided by nine, which is five. And the fraction of calculators that are solar powered is 2 fifths. We good? OK, home stretch. Can two equivalent fractions both be fractions written in simplest form? If you have two fractions that are equivalent, can both fractions be in simplest form? Yes. No. Why not? They have to be equivalent now. So you gave me two fifths. Four tenths. OK. And so they're both equivalent. Mm -hmm. Two fifths are simplified. And I like what you're, you're getting. I think what you're trying to say is, is what they want you to kind of think about with this question, is there's only one, for a, frac for a set of fractions that are equivalent, there's only one that's going to be the simplest fraction. And here's how the book explains that. And remember what we said, if you can't simplify it any further, it's because the numerator and denominator has a GCF that's 1. You can't divide anything into the numerator and denominator other than 1. Does that make sense? Are we good? OK, next question. Are these two equivalent? No. Why not? 
Why aren't they equivalent? Somebody, I think I, I've, I've moved this way. I want to continue this way. Anybody in these last two rows have an answer for me? Anybody in these last two rows that I haven't called on have an answer for me? Um, Alexandra, you're way in the back. Are these two equivalent? Right, so very good. Two-fourths is equal to a half, and eight-eighths is... The book says one over one was their answer, but you know if your numerator and denominator are equal, then that is the same as a whole number one. Okay, now... A teacher asks students to find a fraction equivalent to one answer. A, a, a fraction equivalent to one answer is below. Explain. So take a look at this. Is this true? No. no. What did they do? They added. So if I add the same number to the numerator and denominator, is that going to give me equivalent fractions? No. no. What do I have to do? Multiply. I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, OK? OK, so for these fractions, they wanted it in simplest terms, at least write the simplest form of the fraction, but give two other examples. So what's the simplest form of 3 ninths? One third, very good. What's the simplest form of 36 48ths? Uh, bigger number, so now, you're, now you guys are. Two thirds. One third. One third. One third. Three fourths. You saying three fourths? Two thirds. One third. One third. Thirty six divided by six. Oh yes, six. We need to divide that one by six. I see a lot of people calling out that aren't really sure. Who's who knows it? Okay, we're gonna come back. I'm gonna reveal that in a moment. Sixteen thirty six. What's the simplest form of that? Okay, and then you guys know how to find other equivalent fractions, but I, I'm going to reveal to you some exam, a sample answers. Okay, these answers may vary with the exception of the simplest form, right? Because there's only one fraction that's going to be simplest form of a set of equivalent fractions. Okay. How is that nine fourths? Oh, you know what? That's a mistake. I apologize. OK, that was a typo. Sorry. Are we good? Yeah. OK. And that's lesson four. And the reason why I hadn't added 